Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number three on learning how to connect your Adafruit Ultimate GPS to the BeagleBone Black. Uh, it's really important that you've gone in and looked at those first two lessons because today's lesson will build very heavily on those first two lessons. In the first lesson we pretty much just learned how to hook the uh, device up and start seeing data coming off of it. In lesson number two we started seeing how that we could send commands from the BeagleBone Black to the Adafruit GPS to configure the Adafruit GPS like we wanted and then get data back from it and today what we're going to do is the rather tedious task of going in and starting to parse those NEMA sentences that are coming off of the GPS because the uh, the uh, GPS has just spit off serial data that are in long strings and so we have to go into those those long strings and we got to start breaking them apart and putting them in real variables where we can actually work with them and use them. So it's going to be a little bit of a a little bit more detailed lesson today. Make sure that you've gone back and looked at lesson number one and two before you try to do that. You can do that by going to toptechboy.com uh, I'll show you real quick here, www.talktickboy.com. You can come into the BeagleBone Black lessons, and then these are the introductory lessons. Come down, then you go to the BeagleBone Black GPS Tracker Project, and you can see that we are now on lesson number three. Where we are going to start is we are going to start <coughs> with that code that we had developed in lesson number two. So you need to call up that software that we developed uh, in lesson number two if you developed it alongside of us. I'll call that program up. If you did not actually put it all in, you need to go in and get it from lesson Beagle Blown, Beagle Bone Black GPS lesson number two, which you can see here, and the code is down here. That will be what we are starting with. <clears throat> We're now over to our command line. Our terminal window. And I believe that I had saved that pro program as uh, uh, when we were doing it, GPS command dot pi because we were sending commands to the GPS. And this was the software that we developed in that lesson number two. Now I don't want to overwrite this software, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to resave this just as GPS. So I am going to control O to write out and then I'm going to come over here you see on the name and I am going to just make it gps.py then enter save under a different name Y for yes and then that is so now we're working on the file gps.py couple of things you remember we set up this class of GPS and then uh, down in our software we created an object called my GPS calling that GPS class. Well it's really good to use those classes and what I want to do is I want to start moving our function software from down here in the main program <coughs> up into this uh, GPS class and that way when we interact with the GPS from the main program it's going to be much more intuitive commands, commands like read GPS or something like that and we're not going to have to be doing all this crazy parsing and all that stuff down here. So we're going to put that ugly code up inside of our class GPS. You remember that in our GPS we have this uh, function called init. That's the function that is called automatically when you first create an object in a, of a given class. It executes this. And so in this part, in our init, we really went in and configured the GPS the way we wanted it. We sent the commands to the GPS to get it to do the things we want. If all this doesn't make sense to you, just simply go back to lesson number two where it is all explained. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to now add a new function to the uh, class. So the first function was the init function that just sets up GPS. Now we want the GPS to do something, so we need a new function. What are we going to call that function? I believe that we're going to call it DEF to define the function read. Okay. <clears throat> so if you look down here where I created an object, my GPS, by calling the GPS class, if I wanted to now call read, I could just say my GPS dot read and then open 
uh, open parentheses, close parentheses, so I can call it from this object, and that's the really nice thing about it. So what are we going to call this? We're going to call it read. What do I need to pass it? I need to pass it self. Okay, what does it mean to pass this function in this class self? Well, when I created the object, my GPS, based on the class GPS, which we're working on here, I now have an object called my GPS. That's me. That's myself. And so when I pass it self, I'm passing it that object name. So if I come down here and say self.hello, to call it here, it would be my GPS dot hello because I'm passing it the name my GPS. So it just it's a nice way to make things very intuitive after you have created an object. And this will make a little bit more sense after we work with it a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to read the GPS. So if we are going to read the GPS, what do we need to do? The first thing that we need to do is we need to clear out the serial. Uh, we need to clear out those serial ports because maybe down here in the main program, we're out making other measurements. We're doing er other things. We're going around doing all this other stuff. Well, while we're doing other stuff, that GPS keeps hammering the serial port with data. And so what I want to do is I want to get rid of all that possibly old or partial or incomplete data. I want to clear it and then just get the next stuff that comes in. And so I'm going to do a serial YSCR because that is the object that we created all the way up here, our serial object that we created to uh, to interact with the uh, UART serial pins on the BeagleBone was SCR was the name of it. So that's what we're using down here. Okay, so where were we? We were right here. <coughs> so I'm going to do a serial dot flush input. Okay, let me get this right. Okay, so we're going to do a serial dot flush input, uh, open close. Notice also that uh, the I is uppercase here, so we're going to do a serial flush input. I'm going to do serial two serial flush in, inputs because I just want to get all that off. If if while I'm flushing it the first time, if I get some more stuff coming, I just want to make sure that I'm starting with nothing old in there and nothing partial. Okay, so I've gotten uh, the stuff out of the serial port. What do I want to do now? I want to wait for data. How do I wait for data? Well, while serial.in waiting equal equal zero. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to look at the serial port and if there's no data, ooh, I am misspelled waiting, W-A-I-T-I-N-G, W-A-I-T-I-N-G, okay. Uh, <clears throat> if I look at the serial port and the amount of data that's waiting for me there is zero, then there's no data. So what should I do? I should just wait. What should I do? Absolutely nothing. I pass. So it's going to sit here and loop as long as there's no data. As soon as there's data, it's going to drop out. Well, when there is data, then what would I want to do? I would want to read it. Okay, I would want to read it. So what am I going to do? Okay, I am going to read it. Now, what, what the way I'm going to set it up is I'm going to set it up as self dot n m e a one is going to be equal to serial dot read line like that. Okay. What is self? Well, self is whatever object that you create down here. I created the object my GPS. So that's going to get passed in as self. And so this would be my GPS dot NEMA1. So if I'm down here wanting to know what NEMA1 is, I would say, well, tell me what my GPS dot NEMA1 is or whatever the object you created. That's how that self works. And as we go along, hopefully that will become clear. But it's really a very useful, it's a very useful construct. Okay, so now I should have that first NEMA sentence. Do you remember when we set this up, I was telling you that the really useful information is in two different NEMA sentences. The NEMA sentences we want to use is the GP, RMC, and the GP, uh, GA. And so we told the uh, Adafruit when we did the serial dot right that we just wanted the GP, uh, 
uh, RMC and the GPGGA. So it should just be sending us two sentences. Well, if it's sending us two sentences, I've got to have two different variables, right? I've got to get the first sentence and then I've got to get the second sentence. Now, one thing I should point out is we don't know for sure which is going to be the first and which is going to be the second, but we know that there's there's going to be a, GP, G, a GP RMC and a GP GGA. We don't know which one's going to come first, but we got to read them both. Well, what did I just do? I read one of them. What do I need to do now? I need to read the next one. Don't know if it's there yet, so what do I have to do? I got to wait on it. Serial dot in waiting equal equal zero. What do I do while I'm waiting for data? I do absolutely nothing. I pass and just look around. When does it drop out of that? When it has data. When it has data, what should I do? I should read it. So I'll say self dot n m e a two because this is our second sentence is equal to serial dot read line. Okay, so I should have the two data strings that I want. That's the good news. The good news is I have the two pieces of data that I want. That should put me in fairly good shape. But now what do I have to do with those two uh, with those two data strings? Well, I parse them. And let's go back. Uh, let's see if I can go back here to, uh, I believe it was in Arduino lessons. Uh, it was about lesson 24, understanding NEMA sentences. Okay. And so this is what those NEMA sentences look like. The first part of the NEMA sentence tells you which sentence it is, and then you have comma, time, comma, latitude, comma, which hemisphere you're in, comma, blah, 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 blah. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take this long string, which is now in NEMA 1, and I need to break it into an array. And how I want to break it into an array is I want to split it at the commas. And then that array, like if it's NEMA array, NEMA array 0, the first element would be this. NEMA array 1 would be this. NEMA array 2 would be this. And so I would have an indexed array that would have each one of these in one slot. And where do I want to divide it? Well, I can divide it at the comma because nicely there are no other commas in here except the commas that are uh, separating the data field. So we might con consider that comma separated uh, uh, values. So that makes it easy to parse. So the first thing that we need to do here is, uh, let's see, I am right back here. So we just read self.nema2 is equal to serial.readline. And so the next thing that I need to do now is I need to split that sentence. I need to split both of those sentences. So I'm going to say, I am going to say that uh, I'm going to create a new variable, nmea one okay and that's where it's going to be an array where I split this uh, NEMA one okay it's going to be an array so I'm going to say NEMA one underscore array okay NEMA one underscore array and that's going to be equal to self dot NEMA one. Now, why did I not put a self out here? Because I'm not trying to pass this back to anybody. I'm not trying to make this available. This is just something I'm using here uh, to to help me get this thing uh, get this thing set up. So it's going to be uh, self dot nema one dot. What did I want to do with that long string? I wanted to split it. Okay. Where did I want to split it? I wanted to split it at the comma and where you show. Where you're splitting it, I'm splitting it at the comma. That needs to be in single quotes. So let's look at this. I have a new variable. It's an array. It's called NEMA1 array. How do I get it? I get it by taking self.NEMA1, which we just read, and dot splitting it. And where do I split it? I split it at the comma. Okay. What else do we need to do? Well, we need to split our other NEMA sentence. So I'm going to say, I'm going to create a new variable. NMEA2 underscore array <coughs> is equal to self dot what? NEMA2. I'm splitting dot NEMA2. What did I do? I misspelled that. I have an extra R. S E L F. Okay, that looks good. NEMA2. What am I going to do? I'm going to dot split it. 
and where am I going to split it? At the comma. Okay, so now instead of having two long strings, I have an array of the first NEMA sentence, I have an array of the second NEMA sentence, and every position in that array has one value. So we are making progress. This is why I love Python. It's very easy to work with strings. Python is very good at using to, uh, to parse these NEMA sentences. All right, so we have our two, uh, our two arrays. So what do we need to do now? Well, we got to start parsing it. But the thing that I don't know is, I don't know if NEMA 1 is GPRMC or if it's GPGGCA. And so how I parse GPRMC is different than how I'm going to parse GPGGA. So what I've got to do is I've got to check and see which NEMA sentence I'm dealing with. So I know, I know I'm going to start with 1. I'm going to start with one. I just don't know what one is. And so I have to check and see what it is, and what I do to it depends on what it is. <coughs> so let's just say if NEMA1 underscore array, okay, if NEMA1 underscore array, and then which position in the array do I want to look at? Well, it's the first position. What's the first position? Zero. So this is saying look at the first element of NEMA underscore array zero. And what am I checking for? I want to know is it equal, equal, is it a G, and I got to put the dollar there, dollar G P R M C. Okay. So if NEMA1 score array, the first element, element 0, if it is equal to GPRMC, then I need to parse things as follows. Okay. So now I'm going to start parsing that those elements of the array one by one into things that are useful. Okay, well let's see if we can go back and look at that NEMA sentence real quick here. I believe this is no, that was not where we were. Okay, here it is. Okay, so let's look at this this first thing. So we're going to see is it the GPRMC? So if this first element is GP dollar GPRMC, then the next element, element one, we get something like this: nineteen forty five thirty point zero zero zero. That's confusing and not very useful. So we got to convert that into something that means something. And so let me tell you, this is actually what time it is. And I will show you what we need to do to that though to make it useful. When we have a number, okay, like this: one two four one four four three eight hundred. What does that actually mean when the NEMA sentence reads it's 12, 24, 42 universal time? And so you can see you really want a colon there and you really want a colon there and we're not interested in fractional seconds. So we want to take this and we want to turn it into this. And in order to do that we have to use slices in Python and it's real easy but I need to take a second and show you how slices work. What this is, is like if I had, uh, let me just put something else here, like if I had array, I'll just call it array to be easy, array 1, because it was the first element had that in it, or the element 1, which is the second element, I know that is confusing. We put another set of brackets, and inside of these brackets we show what part of array element 1, which is this, that we want. Well, if I say 1, 2, it would say take the first from the first letter to the second letter. Okay, uh, if I just go like this from here to five, that says go at the start because I didn't put anything here from the start to five. If I put uh, five and then nothing, that would say go from five to the end. You can also reference from this end from the end you can reference and that's what we need to do for NEMA sentences because sometimes they don't all have the same number of characters but everything is always proper reference from the right so we're always going to reference from the right so if I wanted the 12 what position would that be well that would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 what I would do is I would want to start at the beginning 
and go up to where? Minus 8. The period counts. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I want to go from the start up to minus 8, but not including it. So that's how you do it. Up to minus 8, that's the 1, but don't include it. So this would correspond to the 1 and the 2. Well, how do I get the four, the 1 and the 4? <coughs> I would go, where do I want to start? I want to start at the 1. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's minus 8. So I start at minus 8. Where do I want to go? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Minus 6, which means I want to go up to but not including the 4. That's the way the second one works. It's up to but not including. So minus 8, minus 6 like this. So if I put it like this, minus 8, minus 6, what that would be is that would be the 1 and the 4. And now if I want the 4 and the 3, how would I do that? Well, I would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I would start at minus 6, and I would go where? I would go all the way to the end. I would go all the way to the end, and so I wouldn't put anything there. And so these three things would be the 12, the 14, and the 43. But when we build the string, we want to put the semicolon between them so that it will be it will be uh, intuitive. So we'll want a semicolon here and a semicolon here. So now let's let's build that string. Okay, that, that's actually going to be the toughest one that we're going to do. I promise you that's going to be the toughest one we're going to do. So we're going to create a new variable. What is the variable that we're going to define? We're going to do self. I want to make it surf. Self because that's how we want to call things down here because we could call it with the object name. So we'll say self dot time utc self dot time uh, uppercase utc that's going to be equal to okay I want to get those first two characters so I'm going to say n m e a we're on sentence one okay we're on the array and then which element are we we are element one which is the second element okay now, what characters do I want? I just showed you I wanted from the starting character to the minus 8 up to, but not including the minus 8 character. That should give me the first two characters. Then what do I want to do? Well, when you put a plus on a string, that just means glue the strings together. So if I said 3 plus 5, if 3 is a string and 5 is a string, 3 plus 5 would just put the 3 beside the 5, it would be 3, 5. Or hello plus world would be hello world. It just stacks them together. So the plus just stacks our strings together. Well, what do I? What did I want after that? I wanted a colon. So I'm going to add in a, a one character string of a colon. Then what do I want? Uh, well, I want to add I want to add Nima1 underscore array. And then which uh, element am I on? Well, I'm still on the first element. I'm still on the first element. Now what did I want? Remember the next one was minus 8, minus 6. We'll get the middle two characters. So minus 8, colon, minus 6, <clears throat> like that. Now what do I want to add? Okay, what do I want to add now? I want to add another colon. So I will add the colon. And it's got to, that's got to be in the single quotes. And then what do I want to add? You remember the last thing? It was NMEA1 underscore array1. Okay, and then uh, we want, we want to go from the minus 6, and then we want to go to the uh, minus 4, up to minus 4, but not including it. Now, why am I doing minus 4? Let me show you if I can show you that real quick here. Remember, on this NEMA sentence, we also had all of these things here, and so we want to get rid of those. We want to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, up to minus 4 but not including it, and that should get those two characters. 
I hope that makes sense. Minus 6 to minus 4. So I need to look at this just for a second to make sure I'm not making, because this was a lot of typing. Minus 6, minus 4, array, NEMA 1. You're all probably screaming at me as you're seeing my things. Uh, guys, this dollar sign isn't really here. That just means there's more data off the screen. So don't go in there and put a dollar sign there. Minus 6, colon, minus 8, NEMA 1, array, plus uh, start to minus 8. NEMA 1 array self -time USC. That looks good. That looks very good. Okay. We are ready to parse our second. We are ready to parse our next uh, our next thing. Things are going to get easier now. The next part of that NEMA sentence is the latitude. So let's go back and look at that real quick. Okay, so we had we've done GP RMC. We've done the time. Okay, this next one is whether you're active or void. Okay, and so if you say we've gone 0, 1, 2, this active or void we're not really going to use because it's not of interest to us. So the next one that we are interested in is this one. Okay, and that's the latitude. That is the latitude, 30 degrees and 51.8007 minutes. And so that has the information we want, and that is in position 0, 1, 2, 3. So up next is we're going to parse that thing. And remember that we need a space between the 30 and the 51 because this is the degrees. Same thing. I got to start from this end. I can't just say take the first two because what if it was 100 degrees? You would take the first three, but if you take the first three, it's not 305 degrees. Everything is referenced from the right side. And so what I always know is it always won't be the first and second. Sometimes it'll be the first, second, and third. But it will always be the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to seven. The start up to minus seven. It will always be that. And so we will parse it as such. So I'm going to create a new variable, self.lat degree. Okay, the latitude degrees. And what's that going to be equal to? Well, I'm on NMEA1. Okay, I'm on NMEA1 underscore array. What position did we want? Well, we wanted position 3. Okay, and then what slice did we want? Well, we just said we want to go from the start up to, but not including, negative 7. Okay, so that should give us the degrees that we're at. Well, what else are we going to want? We're going to want self dot min uh, lat minute. Okay, lat minute, and that's going to be equal to NEMA underscore array NEMA one NEMA one underscore array. Where am I? I'm still on that third element, which is really the fourth element. Okay, element three, which is the fourth element in the list. And where did I want to go there? Well, I am going to want to go from minus seven to the end. So start at minus seven and then go to the end. And so if I don't put anything there, it'll go to the end. This will, I'll get going faster here in a minute, but just understand, look at this. So that's position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would take the five and the one all the way to the end, and that's minutes. But look at this one. You see this one has three leading on the degrees, 100 degrees, but look, it still works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minus seven gets you degrees, and so that's why you always want to go from the right. Okay, so we go from minus seven to the end for the minutes. What do we need to do now? We need to do the, let's go ahead and do the hemisphere that we're in because we will need to know that if we look at the NEMA sentence, the GPRMC minute sentence after the latitude. So this is the latitude. The next element has which uh, hemisphere you're in. So this N is for north, and that you do need to you do need to know that. So we're going to snag we're going to snag that one, and we're going to call that self <coughs> dot lat him for latitude hemisphere and that's going to be equal to NMEA1 underscore array which position was that in that was in slot 4 
Okay, and we don't have to do anything to it because it's either an N or an S, and so we just snag it as lat hem. Okay, what do we need to do now? We need to do the longitude. The longitude was next, so self dot lon uh, degrees, just like we did the latitude. Okay, the only difference is it's going to be N M N M E A one underscore array. Instead of this being in position three, it's in position five, okay, because it's over two. And what do we want? Well, these are going to be the same. The, the format's the same, so we're going to go from the start up to, but not including the seventh digit. And then we're going to do self dot lon minute m i n, and that's going to be equal to n m e a one underscore array and then what position is that going to be in that is still going to be in five I believe yes five okay and then there we're going to go from the minus seven character to the end <coughs> so we should have the time we should have the latitude degrees the latitude minutes which hemisphere we're in the longitude degrees and the longitude minutes I hope this isn't too tedious, but if you tried to do this in some other languages, you would be pulling your hair out by now. We just got to be real careful, but this should work. So let's say, what do we have next? Self dot lon hem, which hemisphere we're in, in the longitude, and that's equal to NMEA1, NMEA1 underscore array, okay? And then, ooh, I see a mistake up here I made. I didn't close that. Okay, did you guys get that? Make sure you got it just like that. Okay, now we should be in six. All right, and that's just, again, that's like an east or a west, an e or a w, so that's an easy one. We don't have to mess around with it. Now, self dot, what's the next one? How fast you're going, knots. Self dot knots is equal to n m e a one underscore array, and then what position was that? That was the seventh position. So let's go back and look at that NEMA sentence. And if you look at this, the z zero one two three four five six seven. This is your speed in knots. Okay, so that's going to be like that. So that will be seven. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have. Okay, we, that's all the stuff we need from that NEMA sentence. So we have parsed our first NEMA sentence. But what if that NEMA sentence wasn't a GPRMC? Then that would not work. So we need to say if NEMA1 underscore array zero if NEMA one underscore array zero equal equal what well what's the other possibility it could be I gotta put the single quote it could be single quote it could be G P G G A G P G G A because that is the other type of sentence we can see the other type of sentence is the GPGGA those are the two sentences we're asking for so we need to be able to parse that string whether it's a GPRMC or a GPGGA so this is what we do if it's a GPGGA this is actually pretty easy let me show you that sentence real quick a lot of this is redundant with this, so we don't need to go in and parse everything because you know we already have latitude, longitude. But if we come over one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, I think it might be six. Let me look and see. Let me look and see. Uh, so that six position over and I'm going to check this one more time zero one two three four five six that six position over is tells you whether you have a fix or not so I'm going to say self dot fix is equal to n m 
E A one array M M E A one underscore array uh, six. And I'm sorry I'm going so slow, but I've got to just catch as many mistakes as I can as I go along. This is a little bit tedious, but we are almost done here. We're, we're almost done with the hard parts. The second thing that I can get from this is uh, self dot altitude. And you see that's something I really want because of my interest in high, high altitude ballooning, put, putting these things on edge of space balloons. Uh, I want to know the altitude. And this is re really the main reason that we need this GPGGA sentence is it gives us the altitude. So I say dot altitude is equal to NMEA1 underscore array. And then let's see where that position is. It is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It looks like 9. It looks like position 9 because this would be the altitude in meters. Position 9. So we are going to put that in position 9. The other thing while we're here, there's one other kind of useful thing, self dot sats is equal to NMEA1 underscore array. The seventh position shows you how many satellites you're tracking. That's kind of good because if you just have three, that's not a very good fix. If you got eight or nine, that's a, that's a great fix. So we want to know how many satellites that we're looking at. And so that's, uh, that's a good way to do it is to look in that sentence in the, in the slot seven. And that should have it. Okay, so we have now parsed the first sentence. If the first sentence is a GPRMC, we'll parse it this way. If the first sentence is a GPGGA, we'll parse it this way. The thing to see, though, is, is that uh, the thing that you got to see is, is that second sentence that we're reading, right, because we want both of them. It's just we don't know which one came first. So we need to do the same thing here with this second one, okay? And you can do that by just copying and pasting. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here because it's almost identical. Oops. Ah. It's almost identical. So I'm going to just see if I can get all of this. And then we're just, we'll change the ones to two. So I'll say copy. Okay. And then I'll come down here. And then I will say paste. And hopefully this will get in pretty close. Okay. That looks, that looks pretty good. Uh, what is going to be different though here is is that now all of these are going to be twos and we got to make sure that we get every one of the NEMA 1 turned to NEMA 2. So I'll come in here and that becomes a 2. Man, and talk about a hard problem to figure out would be if you did not get all of these turned to twos. You would have some goofy, goofy... Okay, and I'm not sure that I got... That did not seem to copy that part that was off the screen. So I might have to come back and fix that. Okay, let's see if I can copy this because I don't think that ended up. Hopefully you didn't have this problem. It's just I got to make my font bigger, big enough you can see it. And so uh, I need to make sure that that part that was off the screen gets copied. And so I'm going to come here. And I might have to copy some. I might have to. Ah, that was not good. I apologize for that. But let me uh, get back over here. You won't have this because you weren't running off the edge of the screen, I don't think. OK, so I need the. Okay, let me show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to get it where it's all on the screen at the same time. So I'm going to come uh, up here and I'm going to make sure that I have all of it on the screen at the same time.
Okay, the way I'll make sure I have it on the screen at the same time, I'm going to make the font small, and I'll come back and make it bigger in a minute, but I've just got to make sure that I've got that one line in there right. So, uh, Okay, so now what you can see is, or probably you can't see very well, this is that whole thing that I was trying to do, NEMA 1 array, okay, and then ended with uh, NEMA 2. And so I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to copy it individually, and then I'm going to get rid of this one. Okay, so I'm going to try again here. I'm going to get this whole sentence, which I know is my good one. I'm going to say copy, all right, because this is the first one that we did. And now where do I need it? I need it down here. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to get rid of this one because I don't know. I kind of got that one gooped up. This is... Come all the way over here. Okay, now I'm going to paste that good one in. Okay, the good one from above. And then what do I need to do though? I need to make these all a two. Okay, so that would be a two. That would be a two. That would be a two. Okay, and now I've got to tab this over where it should be. Tab it over where it should be. Get rid of that. Okay, now I need to uh, once again make this where you can see it. So let me go back to the bigger font. I apologize for this tediousness. Okay, so now we are back in business. Okay, so now what we need to do is we just need to go in and make all the rest of these twos. And so that should be sentence two, sentence two. Sentence two, 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 and then this is two. Okay, then also for the second three here, we need to make that a two, we need to make that a two, and we need to make that a two. Okay, so this has got the parsing done. This does all the parsing. Now we need to come down here. We need to get rid of all this nonsense we were doing before, okay, down in the bottom part. And now we are in the main part of the program, and we're just going to call it up and start doing things, right? We're going to start doing things with it. So let's uh, let's look here. I'll get rid of some of this white space. Okay, look at this. What's the first thing we do? Now we drop out of the class. We come into the main part of the program. What's the first thing we want to do? We want to create a GPS object. I call my GPS object my GPS. How do I create an object my GPS? I call that function, that class way up here. Remember that class GPS? I call that. And when I call it, I create an object. What is my object? My GPS. My GPS is created by calling GPS. Now I need a loop that will loop forever, so I do a while one. Okay, what do I do now? Okay, well, the first thing I got to do is I got to go out and I read the GPS. How do I read the GPS? Can you think? Can you tell me how you would read the GPS? Well, what did we do up here? We created a function called read. And read goes in and it reads the NEMA sentences and it parses them. So we want to execute this function read. How do we do that? It's very simple. We come up and we say my GPS. Why my GPS? Because that is the object that we created. Dot read like that and it will go to that class and it will execute that function. Then let's just see if we're getting, ooh, let me make sure I, this didn't seem to tab right. Let me make sure I got my tab right. Okay, yeah, that looks good. 
What do we want to do? Well, let's print our two NEMA sentences. What was the first one? My GPS, that's our object dot what? NMEA1. Remember, that was the string before we split it or parsed it. Now what? Print what? My GPS dot what? NMEA2. So that'll just print the two NEMA sentences. I like to print those just to see if I'm, you know, if I'm if I'm even on the right uh, on the right ballpark. Okay, now I only want to do this if my GPS dot fix. If the fix is zero, it means I don't have a fix. Well, I don't want to go in and print a bunch of data if it's not real. So I only want to print these things if my dot my GPS dot fix has a value in it. So if it's not equal to zero, then do the following things. What do I want to do? I want to print universal time, colon, space, close that. And then what was our universal time? Well, it would be my GPS dot time UTC, like that. Okay, print you are Tracking, comma, I, I gotta, I need to put a little bit of formatting in here, okay? You are tracking, put a space in there. You are tracking, okay? How many, how many satellites was it? it? Was my GPS because that would be self dot sats. Remember that's what we called it, comma, and then we're gonna put in the space satellites like that. Period, okay? Now, what else do we know? Print, okay, my latitude, like that, space, colon, comma, and that will be my GPS dot lat degrees, comma, and then what is the unit there? It is degrees, and then what was the second part? It was my GPS dot lat minute, M-I-N, comma, minutes, space, Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. I forgot one thing we wanted. Uh, yeah, no, this is right. So I say latitude. My latitude is my GPS lat degree. Degrees. My GPS lat minute. Minutes. And I do probably need a space there. Minutes. Okay. What am I going to print now? After minutes, I'm going to put my GPS dot dot lat hem and that should show me which hemisphere I'm in that if I'm in the northern or southern hemisphere okay that was a little bit uh, that was a little bit tricky but we'll say the next one print my my longitude comma what was that that would be my GPS dot lawn degrees comma space degrees comma then what do I want? Well I want my GPS dot lawn minutes comma and then put our label minutes M I N U T E S and then close that and then comma and then what was the last thing my gps dot lawn him so that'll tell me which hemisphere I'm in so this will say you're at 30 degrees 59 minutes in the northern hemisphere so that should be pretty good I probably have an error in there somewhere and you guys are probably yelling at me all over the place but now we're gonna print my speed comma which is my GPS dot knots remember that one and print my out got to get the quote there my altitude 
and then what is that? My GPS dot altitude like that. Okay. And I think that is what we need to print. I need to just look at this real quick and make sure. I'm sure I have some errors in here. Okay, so let's just save this. I'm going to go Control O to save it as GPS.py. I'm going to Control X to exit out. And then we are going to go and we are going to Python GPS Py and see where all of our mistakes are. GPS.py. Okay, we have a mistake here in uh, self time. You, this is the, the NEMA 1 one. Okay, this is the NEMA 1 one. So we need to go in and look at that. So we're going to nano, it was GPS. That was that first one. I was really struggling with that one, wasn't I? This was just GPS. Hopefully, you guys caught it when I was doing it. But let's see, it's just hard when, you know, you're, you're having to ride across the line like that. But, oh, right here, this is certainly not good. I didn't tab that over after I was done. I don't know if that caused the problem, but that certainly is not where I wanted it. And let me just glance across at it. Okay, and let me look down here, make sure I got the second one right. Okay, let's see what happens now. Yes, okay. Look at that. Okay, now we have another object. Uh, let's see, it says uh, NEMA1 array self dot NEMA1 dot split string object has no oh I misspelled split all right that will be an easy one to fix okay I've, and it's probably in both places okay so let's come down here and uh, where was that here it is okay so this would be s p l i t Okay, and did I ever split NEMA 2? Okay, NEMA 1 array. I am not seeing where, uh, did I do that once I got, I was going to do it when I got here down to the second sentence, but I didn't do that. We did not split that second, uh, that second sentence. How did I miss that? Okay, so sorry, this, this should, uh, up here we should have split the second sentence as well so that would be very easy that's going to be nmea2 underscore array equal self dot nmea2 dot split and then open and then like that like that like that uh, comma I mean split it on the comma that looks good. Control X. Yes. Enter. All right. Let's see what happens. That's a couple of little mistakes. We're waiting for it to initialize. It initializes. And look, we got in. We read the sentences. Uh, if my GPS.fix is not equal to zero, GPS instant has no attribute fix. Okay. Well, somehow I did not get that in there, though. So we will. We will look. That should be an easy one to fix. So on that, it doesn't know what fix is. So maybe I misspelled fix up at the top. So that is down here. And what it is saying is, if my GPS.fix, so it didn't know what fix was. And we should have gotten fix up here in the NEMA2 sentence, self dot fix is equal to NEMA2 underscore array 6. Mm. Let's look up here. Self fix equal NEMA1 array 6. So I did tell it what it was. Okay, I see what's happening. 
look at this. You guys should have yelled at me. That NEMA sentence starts with a dollar. And so when you come into these two places where we were looking for GPGGA, it's never going to be that. It's going to have a dollar. And because it never equaled that, I never ended up down into, into this part of the uh, code. And similarly here, this needs to be a dollar. Okay, so now it should work. So let's go Control X, yes, like that. Had to get those dollar signs in there. So let's do Python GPS.py see what happens. We're initializing. The tension builds. GPS is initialized. Ah, still not going in there. Okay guys, hopefully you found my mistake, but uh, I, I see what it is now. Uh, hopefully you guys were screaming at me as I was going through this, but remember this is NEMA 1, we do this, NEMA 1, we do this, then we had to change all these to NEMA 2's. Well, I did not get this one change to a 2 here when I copied and pasted. And so it was behaving in a very peculiar way. So we have NEMA 1, NEMA 1, then we do the NEMA 2's. Now let's control X, yes, enter. And now let's try running it and see what happens. Okay, we are initializing. We are initialized and let's see what we have here. We have two NEMA sentences and uh, all right, I believe this is working. Let's look at this. Uh, so we're, we're printing out the two NEMA sentences, and you see that we do have a fix. We do have data. Then we come down here. We see universal time, 13.53 minutes and 13 seconds. That looks right, exactly right. Uh, then we, uh, we come down. It says we're tracking four satellites. Not bad, not bad, given that I'm just sitting uh, over here pointing out the window. That's not bad. It reports my latitude is 30 degrees, 51.8081 minutes, and I'm in the northern hemisphere. My longitude is 100 degrees, 36.0026 minutes in the western hemisphere. My uh, speed is 0.3 knots, 0.25, standing still. That's just a little noise in the data. And then it has me at an altitude of 697 uh, meters. Okay, and that's, you know, above sea level. So this is looking really, really, really Okay, this is it's looking really, really good. Let's let's stop and see how we can actually look at these coordinates on Google Earth to kind of get our formatting right for that. If I bring up Google Earth and then I'm just going to kind of have it showing at the same time that I have, uh, let's see, let me just kind of zoom out here, go somewhere else, and uh, let me let me show you how you can put these these numbers into Google Earth. So let's come up and look at uh, a latitude and a longitude. And so uh, right here, the way you would do this, uh, let me get it where you can see both of them at the same time. Okay. Sorry that that's so small. But you can see that it says my latitude is 30 degrees. And so I'm going to put in 30 for degrees and then just put a space. Okay, and then if you look, it says 51.8066, 51.8066, okay, then comma. On longitude, it says 100 degrees, but in the Western Hemisphere, and Google doesn't want to see Western hem Hemisphere. For West, it wants minus in front of that, so I would put minus 100, okay, and then space, and then it says... Uh, my minutes are 36.0005. So 36.0005. And let's see where that takes us. Okay, we're coming over. Let's try to make this a little bigger. Okay, and look at this. This is actually precisely where uh, precisely where I am. I would be right here. The window would be right here. So this is a little building. This is my room, and this is this window right over here. And in fact, this tree right here that you see is that tree right there. So, all right, we've got this thing working. I apologize, this was a long and tedious lesson, and we had a few errors in there. It's just when I write code, I make mistakes, and hopefully when you watch, you can see how I debug things and how I go through and get them figured out. Hopefully a couple of those silly mistakes you found as I went through. But you have what you need now to make a super cool Beagle Bone Black Add a fruit ultimate GPS breakout device.
Okay, we might come back in the next lesson and might show you how you can actually save that data to a file if you want to go outside and walk around with it, save it to a file and come back in and uh, then look at your track in Google Earth. Okay, Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. Thanks for tuning in. Come back shortly for lesson number four.